Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jen here from Nails by Jen. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to my channel. So I wanted to do a little tutorial for you guys showcasing the 6th Lust collection from Madame Glam. Of course, I had to add a little extra zhuzh by adding some gold leaf, some glitters, and some nail art. It's a very simple design to do. So if this is something you're interested in, stick around, keep watching. As always, don't forget to click that like and subscribe for me. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Let's get started. Alright guys, so for this design I'm going to be using five of the colors from the Madame Glam 6th Lust collection. Um, I did do a swatching video on the entire collection so I will post the link to that for you guys below. But they are a very soft pastel um, sort of muted color collection but they have lots of fine gold and silver shimmer in them. They're really really pretty. So I've chosen these five. I've got the Winston, Wham Bam Thank You Glam, the Manhattan, the Antilia, and the Monroe. So I'm just going to flip them right side up for you guys so you can see the color selection that I've got going on. As you can see they are really really pretty pastel colors. I've got sort of a peach a sort of pinkish color, a periwinkle, a little bit more of like a tealy mint, and a purple. So you're going to need something in that um, color scheme. And then I'm also going to be using some gold foil. So I've got this little pack here that um, Glitter Mix Canada had sent me in one of my purchases as a little thank you gift. So you know what gold leaf is, guys. We all kind of have it in our stash. But I really like um, that this one is just flattened out already. I have one in a jar that I find I have to peel and pull apart a little bit more so I really like that this one's kind of flattened out and then of course you're going to need some um, little tweezers so I've got these ones here that I purchased on Amazon again I'll link everything below for you guys so gold leaf and some tweezers and then I'm also going to be using some glitter from the pink chair Now you guys would have seen this in my latest haul video the big haul that I did I absolutely love this gold glitter. It is so, 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 so pretty. Um, it is an iridescent gold. It's very, very unique. I honestly have not seen anything like this. I have over 600 glitters. I have nothing like this in my collection. So if you do not have gold digger, you definitely need to get it because it is beautiful. So I've got that one. And then I've just got a little brush that I'm going to be using to apply the glitter. You can use anything. I've just got this one that I purchased from Michaels and I kind of cut it to be sort of like an ombre brush. Um, you've seen me use it in a few other videos. So something to apply the glitter. And then I'm also going to be using um, my trusty acrylic paints. So if you guys have been watching my videos, you know that oftentimes I do generally reach for the acrylic paints when I'm doing nail art. Um, I really still like working with the acrylic paints. Now I do work with gel paints as well or gel polishes, um, but oftentimes I will gravitate towards my acrylic paints. So I've got several um, different colors here. I've got this one from Craft Smart called Rosebud. This one here from Americana called Wisteria. Pistachio Mint, just a regular white and a baby blue, or it's called baby blue. And then you are also just going to need some type of a little dish for your water for your acrylic paints to thin them out. And then getting into the nail art brushes. So if you guys saw one of my nail haul videos, you saw that I had purchased three different packages um, or collections, I guess you could say, of nail art brushes from eBay forever ago, and they had finally come in. So this was one of the collections. I also received um, three of these ones here. And the thing that I liked the most straight on when I opened them was the length of the brush of this um, unicorn sort of rainbow type of one. But I will say I did try to use these ones and I'm not loving the bristles. Um, they are a bit thick so I feel like I'm going to have to custom cut these ones. They don't come to as nice of a point. So then I started going into using these ones here and I've only used the short ones so far. But you guys, I absolutely love it. I don't feel like I have to cut it or adjust it 
at all. Now, of course, I do wish the handle was a little bit longer because I'm so much more used to working with longer handled brushes. I do find them just the way that they feel in my hand. But you know what? It might just take some getting used to to using the smaller little brushes. But I will say that I absolutely love the bristles on this and I'm so happy to finally find something that I feel like I don't have to cut or custom sort of make to um, work for me. I have not tried the medium or the longer one. Um, I may try those today in the video, but for now, I'll be using the short guy. And of course, I will link these for you below. And then as far as um, top coats go, I'm going to be using both shiny and matte. So you guys know this was in my top five favorites for July, the 2M Beauty matte top coat. Absolutely love it. So I'll be doing that on the nails with um, the um, hand-painted flowers and then I'm going to use my Madame Glam no wipe top coat as well I have used this on a couple of clients in the last couple of weeks just to test it out so I will um, let you know you know how that's going if I'm noticing any chipping or if it's kind of getting dull or anything like that um, in an upcoming video as those clients start trickling back in for their fills I'll let you know and other than that, I believe that is it for our products. So that being said, let's get started. All right, guys. So I'm going to start off by just applying two layers of the gel polish colors, of course, carrying in between um, the first layer. And then I'm going to leave the second layer wet so that we can start applying the um, flakes or the um, foils and the glitter. But I wanted to show you guys the application of the color over both a cover peach and a soft white, just so that you can see when you're doing your client's nails, which one you might prefer. I did a client last week where I did it over the um, cover peach. And of course, I think I forgot to take a picture or a video. I honestly have been so busy this week that I have been forgetting to take lots of pictures with my clients. Shame, 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 shame. But, so I wanna show it to you. So I'm just gonna actually use um, this one here called Monroe. Um, so I'm going to show it to you over the blush pink color. So um, with this particular um, collection, as you can see, it is quite sheer. But if you just want a very soft, shimmery layer, it is beautiful. You don't have to do two coats. I mean, depending on what the look is that you're going for, you know, that is very pretty. It's just got a very soft um, color to it you know, just a very soft or subtle periwinkle hue to it. So I'm going to show you that one. I'm gonna cure that and then I'll do the white one and show you that as well. So here I've got just a soft white and of course I've just put the colors actually underneath of the nail just so that I don't have to do any filing or shaping or anything like that. So I'm just going to apply the color straight on top. So this would be, um, you would build your nail in the cover peach or cover pink. Um, you could build the nail in the soft white or if you're working with gel polishes, you would build your nail in whatever you normally build your nail in and then you would just apply a sort of blush pink um, layer on top or a soft white layer on top before you start applying the color. And again, if you look, it's a very, very sheer but over the white, you definitely see that periwinkle color come through a lot more. And again, it's very, very pretty, even just with one layer. So I'm going to go in with the second layer of the Monroe over the blush pink or the cover pink color. And it just kind of darkens up. Now you could do three coats. Um, I'm trying to remember on the client. I think on one of them I actually did do a third coat now because you don't want to um, You know put gel polish on super super thick Otherwise it won't cure properly. You might get wrinkling. So that's the second layer Again very pretty still very soft and this is the white one. I'm going to do second layer of this uh, Monroe So there you go, as you can see, that color pops a lot more on the white. So here you can see the difference, um, if you notice, definitely on the blush pink one. 
you can see a little bit of that blush pink kind of peeking through so it does alter the color slightly if you compare it to the swatch the one on the white definitely is the closest so I'm going to assume that they may have put a, a white base underneath this swatch or it's just simply because the swatch is so thick that that color is very opaque and very pigmented but I do personally prefer it over a white I just find that you get a true color and and it looks a little more even so Totally up to you guys, you know, depends the look that you're look going for. If you're going to do um, some nails with pink or blush, this might go very well with that. But I'm going to be doing the white underneath just because every single nail will have the color on it completely fully covered. All right, so as I mentioned, that one was called Monroe. So now I'm going to go in with the Manhattan and it's a very soft, minty kind of teal color. It's like... Yeah, like a more of a minty blue, I would say. Again, very, very pretty. And if you want it super, super soft and less pigmented, you definitely could just do one coat and make it very sheer and very soft, but I want it to be more opaque, so I'm doing two coats. So as I said, we are going to put the first layer on and fully cure this and then I'm going to go in with my second layer and I'm going to just cure that for 10 seconds just to kind of set it and then I'm going to be placing my glitter and my um, gold leaf into that second layer. And next I'm going in with my first layer of the Winston. This is a very pretty peachy color. And next I've got the Antilia. I think it's Antilia. Yes, I always seem to get that one wrong. I always kind of think I'm saying it wrong. And this is a really pretty um, purple. It's kind of a lavender purple. And this one that has, in my opinion, the best name, Wham Bam, thank you Glam. Very, very cute name. So this is a pink one. I'm going to do is just actually start getting my um, gold leaf ready to go so what I generally do is I will just pull out a piece now you guys know this stuff can be a big pain in the butt to work with um, first of all you want to make sure that your tweezers do not have any kind of gel or stickiness to them like mine do because I was using them um, this morning for something else as well <laughs> I've been up since two o'clock doing stuff in the nail room. So um, they've got a little bit of sticky gel on them. So just start pulling pieces apart. Now, dependent on the size of your nail, I'm obviously working with quite a large um, nail. So, you know, I could do larger pieces, but if you're working on a very small nail, you definitely want to make sure that um, you're using quite small pieces. I'm just gonna grab my other little flat-ended tweezers here. These, I actually have more of these long ones, but they're put away, so I'm just gonna use this guy here. So I just hold it down and kind of just pull pieces off and break them apart. Now, if you don't want to be fussing around with the gold leaf, you could absolutely use um, an already broken up gold flake. Now I have one of those, but I opted to use the gold leaf because I do actually prefer the look of gold leaf. I do actually think the gold leaf looks the best. Um, I prefer the color over the gold flake. I find the gold flake is way more of a yellow, um, yellow gold, whereas the gold, um, gold f um, leafing is real gold. So. Um, it looks like real gold color. So it's a little softer of a yellow. So, but it is a pain to work with. Um, you know, if you're doing a client and you only have an hour or an hour and a half, this stuff is not the most convenient to work with. And you can't really break it up ahead of time because the minute you like stack it or put it in a jar, it all gets kind of stuck together. Um, the only thing I thought of one time was maybe putting it like this on a paper towel and then laying another piece of paper towel on top of it just to 
prevent it from moving around and then you could maybe roll the paper towel up and then when you go to unroll it everything is kind of still in its place I have not tried that yet if anyone out there has any tips or tricks in regards to using gold um, foiling um, to make it easier or quicker to use when you're actually in the studio or in the salon working on a client Definitely let me know below because it is very time consuming and there are often times when I do use the gold flake um, and like the clients still love it and it's not that it doesn't look good. I just know that I probably would have liked it even better if it was with gold leaf instead of the gold flake. All right, guys, so as you can see, I have got a pretty good little stack of my gold leaf picked apart here and just set on the side. So one thing I want to make sure to mention, if you have never worked with gold leaf before, be sure that there is not a lot of airflow going around. You don't have a fan blowing, even when you're talking or if you're you know, doing anything like that. Um, do not blow in the direction of the gold leaf or it will literally just float away. It is so very um, light and airy that it will just take off and then you'll have to start all over again by picking a bunch of new pieces and you don't want to have to do that. Next thing you want to do is go in and choose the order that you want your colors to go in. So I was kind of playing around with them here for a little bit and I have decided to go in this order. So I am going to start with the thumb over on this side and the pinky will be here. So I am going in the order of the Antillian, then the Monroe, then the Manhattan, then the Winston, and then Wham Bam, thank you Glam. So generally when I'm doing accent nails or nail art, most clients, if they're doing two fingers on each hand, will like to have the ring finger and the middle finger. I've done all different variations. I've done the pinky and the ring finger. I've done the pinky and the pointer. Tons of different variations. There's really no rhyme or reason to which fingers you choose. But for this design, I am going to choose the ring finger and the pointer finger. So I have applied the second coat of the gel polish colors to all of the nails and I have cured them for only 10 seconds just so that they set, but so they're not gonna move around or slide around and be super wet, but that they are still wet enough that I can start applying my gold leaf and my glitter into them. So I'm just going to apply the gold leaf to all of them. And then like I said, these two here, the pointer and the ring finger are going to have the nail art on them in regards to the hand painted flowers. So let's get started with adding our gold leaf and our gold like glitter. to dump a little bit of my glitter out onto the paper. I just find it easier sometimes to pick up the glitter and I'll just sort of move it around and flatten it out. Um, and as you can see, sometimes it just kind of shoots. Um, so be careful with that. I've got one stuck over here, which is okay because it's going on there anyways. Um, and then we just want to start applying. So um, when I apply my gold leaf, I generally will use my tweezers, but you can use your brush, you can use whatever you want. For the ones, um, the thumb, middle, and pinky that are not going to have the flowers on them, just apply your foil and your glitter in whichever manner that you want. So for this one, I am going to start laying the gold leaf um, actually down the center, towards the center of the nail and I'm just going to kind of angle it up through the center of the nail. And then I'll just take my little brush um, or sometimes if you just have you know, your gloved finger on, you can just use your gloved finger. Just wanna make sure that that gold leaf is down flat. As you can see when I tilt it, there shouldn't be anything really majorly poking up if there is just flatten it out make sure that it's laying flat because when you add your top coat you really don't want to have to muck around too much with pieces that are not lying flat i'm going to go in with my brush and i'm just going to also pat in some of that beautiful glitter so that is that nail so now what I'm gonna actually do is stick that in um, and just final cure it just to make sure that that, that top layer is fully cured and that everything kind of sticks in there really and well. Basically we're going to do the exact same thing on the middle finger and the pinky finger. Now for the middle finger, I am just actually switching the direction. So I'm going to go in the opposite, um, at the opposite angle, just to switch it up a little bit. Now 
Now with the pinky, I'm just going to go back into the same direction that I did with the thumb one. All right, so for the um, ones with the nail art on them or the um, flowers on them, I'm actually going to do the gold leaf and the gold foil, or the gold leaf and the glitter a little bit different, just in a different direction. So I'm actually going to fill a little on the top and a little on the bottom. And in the center is where I'm going to put the flowers. I'm just going to go in the opposite direction on the ring finger just like I did with the other nails I kind of switched it up a little bit so I'm just going to go in this direction for the ring finger So you can see already how pretty this is even on its own and I know oftentimes when we are doing um, videos or tutorials on these long stiletto nails sometimes it's hard to see how would this design look on a short nail but you absolutely could do this design on a short nail you just have to work in smaller areas so when you're putting your glitter and your foil um, you know at the top and the bottom you would just do a smaller amount of it you can absolutely do this design on a shorter nail so now what I'm going to do is apply my first layers of the top coat so I'm going to actually just do a shiny layer here shiny layer here shiny layer here on the um, thumb middle and pinky and then I am going to do my matte layer on the pointer and the ring finger so I'm just tipping it upside down so that that top coat kind of goes more to the center and then I'm going to stick it in the light. Now I'm going to go in with my 2M matte top coat. You want to be light handed in the sense of not putting too much pressure so you don't drag around any glitter that isn't secure. Alright guys, so this is what they look like with the first layer of top coat. So now you have a couple of options. Some people will actually go in with their hand file and a buffer um, because there are going to still be some little pokies you can see on this one. There's a little guy there that's sticking out pretty good, which obviously no client would want that. It's going to snag and be very, very irritating. Um, so some people, some nail techs will take a file and they'll go along the sides and smoothen everything out because you can see there's a little bit of a wobble there um, where my top coat didn't level out really nicely. But just having all the glitter and everything like that, that just tends to happen. Um, or even the application of the gel polish if it's uneven at times. So you can take your hand file, go in, do the sidewall, smoothen everything out. You can then take a buffer and try to buff everything and then apply your second layer or you can apply your second layer of top coat in a very thick um, manner or, or you can even build this into the nail into a builder gel. Um, instead of the top coat, you would put a, build, a builder layer first just to make sure that you seal in all those glitters. So I'm just going in with my file and kind of smoothening everything out, making sure that it's all level or as level as I can get it. And it doesn't really take that long if you have a, just a few little kind of snaggy bits, you can run your run your hand over it. Now this top coat that I'm using, the Madame Glam, it, Glam is attack free, but if you had a dispersion layer, obviously you would have wanted to wipe that dispersion layer off before you start trying to file. This one's actually not too bad. I probably don't even need to really do it too much. Just maybe on the sides a little bit. Let me feel it. Yeah, so there's still just that one little snaggy piece right there. So definitely 
definitely just take that time, go over it with a file, and then do your second coat. This will also Basically, you can do the same thing with the matte ones. So again, you want to like maybe this is a tack free matte. So, you know, I can feel it and see. Yeah, there's a couple of areas on the sides that just seem to be kind of poking out a little bit. And you want to do this before you apply your nail art, obviously, because you don't want to end up filing into the nail art at all and messing that up. So other than that, that's pretty good. I mean, the matte top coat is quite a thicker top coat to start with, so, um, you know, it kind of hides a lot of things or covers a lot of things really well because it's on that thicker side. Yeah, so that's pretty good for those ones. I don't really have to do anything on top. They're good on top. So that's how those two look matte. I will say, if you are looking to do a denim nail, this, um, what color is it here? The Monroe, as a matte nail, looks legit. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it legit looks like denim. I think because of those little shimmery pieces, it kind of looks like how denim has sort of that texture, that whitish, just from the fabric. Definitely would be awesome for a denim nail. I have to keep that in mind. Okay, so I've got those ones. Here we got the thumbnail middle finger and pointer so now i'm going to add the flowers onto these ones all right so i've got all of my little paint um blobs i guess you could say put out onto my tile i've got my water here now i forgot to mention that i am going to add just a tiny tiny little bit of black um so i am going to squeeze out a little bit of black there and i'm going to grab my little brush that i love and I'm just gonna wet that little brush and I've just got a little swab here a pad that's wet as well so now oftentimes I like to make my acrylic paint a little bit wetter than what it is because it is quite thick so we're going to start off I'll start off with the periwinkle color the Monroe one I'm just cleaning off the end of my brush because that's usually how I add the water is I'll just take a little bit onto my uh, end of my brush and I'll just kind of dip it in the water and then just swirl it into the acrylic paint. So I'm going to do that. So now the, the type of flowers, honestly, I, guys, I am not a flower person. I could not tell you what type of flower I'm painting. I'm just painting flower-ish patterns. So I'm going to start off with this blush pink tone. And I'm going to do a, a sort of dotting or pressing it in kind of irregular circle. So it's definitely not a perfect circle. It's just kind of irregular. And then I'm going to do another one down here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of dotting it in. It's, it's not perfect. It's how I would actually do a rose as well. If I was hand painting a rose, um, oftentimes I would kind of do this sort of irregular method now you could essentially draw it just drag your brush and kind of make it irregular but oftentimes i find just kind of tapping it in makes it just sort of i don't know look better <laughs> do that on both nails and so you just want to obviously because it's not gel you do have to allow it to dry a little bit in between so i'm just going to stick that one aside and go into the um peach one So now I'm just wiping my brush off. So now I'm going to actually take, and it's okay if it's still wet, like we, it's fine to work with this design that we're doing. It's okay that that pink is still wet or that blush color is still wet. So I'm now going to take a little bit of the white and I'm going to kind of swirl it here. Again, grab a little bit of that white and just kind of marble it into this blush pink color. And then I'm going to just pick some of that up and I'm just kind of just sort of slightly draw a little bit. So as you can see, that I would say kind of looks like a rose, right? But it's the addition of what we do in the center of the nail that kind of makes it look like, I don't know what kind of flower, but it just looks different than a rose. So again, just kind of dragging that marbleized little bit of white and blush through the nail. So we've got what looks sort of like two little roses and I'm going to do the same thing 
on the ring finger. If you guys are flower people or plant people, I tell you, this whole plant phenomenon has gotten wild. I have a girlfriend who has like a plant doctor who comes and like checks on her plants. It's bizarre to me, but guys, plants are in the last couple of years. I know people who are ordering them online. It's crazy. Okay, so now that we're going to let those dry, so they do need to dry now. I'm just going to leave them be and we're going to start drawing kind of the greenery and the little added bits, I would say. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to go into this green color again. I'm going to dip my end of my brush and just wet that um, paint a little bit just to kind of thin it out, make it a little easier to apply. So it kind of flows on the nail better. Wipe that off as good as you can so that your brush doesn't get all gooked up. And I am now going to draw a thin little line. If you guys can hear my cat right now, she is just, I can hear her. She's in crazy cat mode running around downstairs, which she rarely does, but I can hear her doing it. She normally is pretty chill. <laughs> She's like the chillest cat I know. She's 16 years old actually. But for whatever reason, I can hear her running around downstairs. So she's in crazy cat mode. So now I am going to draw a little line going this way. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction of the other one. Draw a little line going that way. And then I'm going to just add my little point petals. Um, so I don't, I don't know what you guys call them, but I call them pointed petals. So just like that, just a little teensy petal. And you don't want them to touch the line. They're actually not touching the line. So they're just just slightly off of that little line you, you just do, drew or painted. And I connect them to the stem. So just kind of draw a little thin line like that. And then one from the center. Just like so. Now if your brush starts getting kind of dry because the paint will start, you know, drying, just clean it off in the water and dip back into your palette. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. I'm going to go in with a little bit of this black. So I'm going to just wet that up a little bit. And I'm going to do a little line from here. So we're gonna do three little lines. Like that, like that. And like that. And then the same thing down here. So I've just got a little daughter here. It's actually on the end of my um, brush that I use for my prep. It just came with the brush, obviously. So I oftentimes will just reach for that one because it's quite tiny. You do want a very small one. And then we're just going to gradually add little dots along that little black line. Now you don't want them to touch because you do want to see a little bit of that black line in between. So I'm going to go into my white paint a little bit. And I'm going to wet that up. And again, I'm going to get like a good little bobble on the end. And I'm just going to start kind of dotting in the center of that flower that we did with your little bobbly brush. And then even though it's not dry, it's totally okay. I'm going to go into the black and do the same thing with little tiny tiny little dots of black and I just find the brush works for this really well because you can get them so so tiny if you look at that it's so small and we've got this blue to work with so I want to add some of that so again I'm just gonna wet it up a little bit and I'm going to take a little bit of the white 
Add a little bit of that purple and maybe even a little bit of that pink. Just kind of marble them a little bit and just make like a little flower here. If you need to go back into the white or whatever to kind of marble it a little better, you can definitely do that. And then I'm actually going to go in with the black and I'm going to add a couple of leaves. I know it seems weird to do black, but I actually just think that it'll just really make it pop a little bit. Just a couple of leaves there. And maybe one here. And I'll probably do a little one here. I am going to draw a longer line coming out of the center of here a little bit like that and I'm going to do the same thing here like so and then I'm going to take my little dotting tool again and I'm going to add dots on the side of that. So again, we are graduating them and making them smaller, but I'm just going to do the dots on the side of that. So it's all gonna be very, yeah, very cool. I'm, I'm loving how that turned out and I love the addition of the black. Like I said in many of my videos, guys, <laughs> when I go to do nail art tutorials, I don't really have, I've not practiced it, I'm just winging it. So as far as I'm concerned, this turned out pretty darn cool. The only thing that I might add, because I always like to add them, is a few little triple dots. Anybody knows who I do, that I have done flowers with, or if you've seen me do any kind of flowers, I do like to add my little triple dots um, here and there. I just find it adds just a little element, something extra, extra. Now I'm just going to basically do the same thing or very similar to on this nail. All right, guys, so here's what we have so far. I just have to put my final layer of matte top coat onto these floral nails, which I am super obsessed and love how they turned. Out. I think they are so cute. Let me know below guys if you prefer to hand paint your flowers or if you much prefer to do stamping or decals. I don't see a lot of hand painting of flowers out there much more a lot of decals and a lot of stamping. I do, but I do all of them. But um, I do love the water decals because the detail in them. I've spoken about that in another video, and people have said that they also really love using the water decals because of the detail that you can get in them. Um, but then there's people like Talia who are avid stampers, and they're so good at it. Now they've got all these stamping plates that have the different layers, so that's really cool. But for this design, I love just hand painting them. And you know, I don't get to hand paint as often as I would like because of my carpal tunnel. So it's kind of nice to have a client come in every once in a while and just challenge me a little bit and ask me to do some hand painting. So let me know below. Do you prefer to hand paint your, paint your flowers? Do you prefer to use decals? Or do you prefer stamping when you're doing any kind of floral designs? All right, guys, thanks for watching. I wanted to get a tutorial out to you guys because I haven't done one for a little while. So I know that some of you may have looked at this design and thought that the title was completely incorrect by calling it a simple floral nail design. But as you saw, it actually is very simple. The only stipulation is there's just several layers, but the nail art in itself, hand painting these flowers was really easy. Anyone can do it as long as you have a little detailer brush, some acrylic paints, or you could go ahead and use gel 
gel polish or gel paints for the nail art as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with someone else. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe for me. Any questions or comments, leave them below. And as always guys, have an amazing day.